want to take you back to the beginning, to the beginning of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the first human being. I want to share with you an awareness, the plan of Iblis himself and his conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his arguments which he put forth, the challenges he put forth and the double challenge which Allah gave him. Adam alayhi salam's response, why he ended up on earth and the plan showing us how the plan is continuing today before our eyes. Iblis first of all was a jinn and he had a position among the ranks of the angels. He actually worked among the angels literally. But he wasn't an angel, he was a jinn made of fire. The angels are made of light. Allah tells us that the angels are made of light. The Prophet ﷺ tells us this. He had a special rank, he was God-fearing. He was devout. He was a worshipper, wallahi. And he believed in the oneness of God and his might and power and everything. And he turned to him, he was a righteous servant of God. In every meaning of the word. However, something inside of his heart. When we say heart, we don't mean literally the organ that's pumping blood. When we say heart in Arabic, we mean the mind, something here, in here, something inside. If you change hearts, literally, you're not going to change that. that. That stays with you, the mind, it's something in here. Iblis had something in here, something that wasn't right. He, it was a secret. And Allah, He doesn't put that in you. But Allah gives you the opportunity, the, the circumstances to have it if you want to, depending on how you choose. This is the will of God. His knowledge is unbelievable. So Iblis, Allah tested Iblis. It was a test and there were many other plans as well to this test. At the same time, the test of Iblis is also, was also going to be a test for Adam السلام, our father. And the test of Adam was also going to be a test for us. So Allah said to his angels one day, Inni khalikum basharam min teen. He said to them, O oh my angels, I am about to create a creation, a being made of clay. Now the angels had known the jinns before what they had done. They shed blood and corrupted on earth. This earth was here before us, as according to the Quran. And the jinns lived here and they still do. And they corrupted and shed blood. So Allah sent the angels down and they actually had a battle. And they forced them out into the islands of the world. This is knowledge which Allah told us about. So the angels replied, They said, O oh our Lord, are you going to create a creature on earth that will shed blood again and corrupt again when we glorify your name and you and praise? They're not questioning. But they're asking to seek knowledge, they're confused. Oh, our Lord, look, I mean, you know, here we are, we're praising you, we're glorifying you. The jinns, look what they did. We don't understand the reason behind creating another creation when they're going to shed blood and corrupt. What are they actually saying? They're afraid. They're saying, in other words, oh, our Lord, have we done something to you? Are you displeased with us? Because we're glorifying. Here we are. But obviously they didn't understand what's happening. God did not explain it to them. Explain it because they will not understand until they see. So all he said was this He said I know that which you just do not know you cannot know so Allah created Adam alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Jibreel alayhi salam to bring soils from different parts of the world That's why amongst you beings you've got the white and the black and you've got the dark and the tan and the light and the fair and you, then you've got the blonde and you've got the black hair and then you've got the red hair because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from different parts of the different soils from around the world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that to be a sticky black dark mud like a vase a statue an empty hollow statue and because he was empty and hollow and he was like a statue, he was like a salsal and kalfakhar. So he had that tinkling noise if someone touched him. Who used to touch him? The angels. 
I wanted to check him out. What's this? Something new. <laughs> Something new in the neighborhood. Well, no, who's this guy? What is he? What is he made of? That's the first time I see a creation like this. What is he? So they used to go and touch him. And when they used to touch him and he used to make that tinkling noise, there's some directions that say that the angels used to get scared, petrified. They used to run away. But he used to stick around Iblis. And Iblis, he's, he's starting to think here. What is so special about this creature which God had created? Curiosity. And at the same time, something began to develop in his heart. A form of jealousy. Why? Here is Iblis among the rank of the angels, wanting to please his Lord, loves his Lord, wants to please him. And now something had come up which he had never anticipated, never thought of, and suddenly he feels something strange coming out. He could have controlled it, but he let it take over, consume him. It was the jealousy. Jealousy began. So he went to look at this creature and he saw it. It didn't look too impressive to him. And he was able to, th to flow through it. Because he's created from a less denser material, which is f flames of fire, he was able to flow through this body. And he found, as in the hadith, he found that we were hollow. If you take the drain the blood out and everything, we're very hollow actually. As time went, Allah left the body of Adam alayhi salam like that. And every time Iblis looked at it, he felt fear a bit. But at the same time, he's trying to beat his fear and say, I'm better than you. You're not going to be better than me. Do whatever you want. Allah left him there until that jealousy developed more and more and more. More. And now it turned into proudiness, arrogance. Jealousy turned into proudiness. Allah created Adam, put his soul into him. When Allah Azza wa Jal blew into Adam alayhi salam or breathed into Adam alayhi salam, the soul started to come from his head from the top to the bottom. He didn't go in all at once. It started from top, his head, his shoulders, his chest, his stomach, his thighs, his feet. It's been narrated that when Adam alayhi salam first sensed life coming into his eyes, he was in the Jannah. He was in the paradise. So now his eyes started to sight. And what was the first thing that he saw? He saw the beauty of the Jannah and the beautiful fruits of the Jannah. Subhanallah, straight away. Captivated his attention. So what did Adam alayhi salam wanted to do? Before the soul and life had reached his feet, Adam wanted to jump and go and get the fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلْ Mankind is created out of haste. Rush, rush, rush. Always wants everything quick, quick, quick. The nature of mankind. Natural inclination, the desires. And then life and the soul entered the entire body of Adam. Now, now Adam alayhi salam came to life. Before that he was just a statue. And now he's a human being. He's a living one of the first things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam. Sujudu lahum. Bow down to him on the ground, to Adam alayhi salam. Fasajadu. The angels all obeyed. There's a letter there. The letter before the word sajadu, which means they prostrated. There's a letter. It says, fa, fasajadu. Fasajadu means they immediately prostrated. No hesitation. Then Allah says, Illa Iblis. Except for Iblis, he didn't prostrate. Then Allah further explains why. Abba, he chose to, re to refuse. He actually objected. He refused. So it was a conscious refusal. So you don't think that he couldn't. He could, but he consciously refused. The reason he refused is because he allowed himself to be proud. Proud as in not happy, arrogant. And that resulted in him becoming among the disbelievers. He hid the truth, kafir, the, literally the word kafir means to hide the truth deep and to cover it up. That's what kafir means. Knowing the truth, hiding it, denying it. So kufr can also mean denial, not just disbelief, denial of the truth, knowing it. Allah says, 
قال ما منعك الا تسجد لما خلقت بيدي what prevented you o iblis to prostrate to one who i have created with my own hands allah created him directly what did iblis respond قال انا خير منه i am better than him انا خير منه i am better than him why why خلقتني من النار you made me out of fire وخلقتهم من الطين You made him out of, out of clay. clay. I'm from fire. fire. He's, from, he's, from, he's clay. from clay. Allah then said to him, Okay, very well. Are you adamant about your decision? He said, I am adamant. Allah gave him chances. He continued. Then Allah finally said to him, I created him and I am the one who commanded you. You have disobeyed me outright and arrogantly. This is Iblis's reply. He swore an oath by God's honor and his might. It means he believes in God. He knows God better than most people of today and of the past. In fact, maybe more than anyone who's existed except for the prophets. He knows Allah very well. By your might and by your power, I will lead them all astray. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He swears by Allah's honor and might, acknowledging his might and honor. And then he tells him, what you've done, I'm going to wreck it. Allah said, okay, very well. Since you've done that, I'll give you some ideas as well. Because you can go for that challenge. I'll challenge you too. He said, climb on top of any one of them that you are able to. He says, istafziz, be a good horseman. And climb on top of the servants who want to be horses for you. And try to delude them away with your voice. Salt What's shaitan's voice? And then he said, and try to delude them away by showing them materialism, materialistic things. Let them be involved in materialistic things with their cars and their homes and their clothes and their money and their this and their, their desires. And sharikhum, associate with them, like be a part, be a partner with their children. Use their children against them. And with their money, use their money against them. Wa'idhum. And give them false hopes or false promises. And also, in another verse, make them afraid. Make them afraid of poverty. That in the future they're going to get poor. So then they'll resort to haram. They'll resort to theft or to uh, indecent types of jo haram jobs to earn their money. Or to indecent earnings, improper earnings. Make them afraid that you're going to get poor. You're going to lose out. You're going to be out on the street. So go and get haram. Do that. Allah is telling the shaitan to do that. Allah says, but the shaitan never promises anyone except deception. He does not mean anything he says. He knows you better than yourself. And he works step by step. This is what Iblis replied. He said, then, oh my Lord, okay, the challenge between you and me is there now. But I want something from you. If that's the case, keep me alive until the day they are resurrected. Give me time. Allah says, We will give you time, but not what you're asking. Not until the day of resurrection. You want to escape death? No. We will give you time until the end of the world. When the hour goes, you will die with them. That's your time. Then, Allah said to him, but wait. Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhum sultan. I'm going to tell you something. My true servants... You will not have power over them. That's the only thing. Then the Iblis replied, he said, Okay, I will lead them all astray. Except your servants among them who are sincere. Those are the only types of people, my brothers and sisters, whom the Iblis and the Shayateen have absolutely no power over. The ones whose hearts are absolutely sincere. There's no hypocrisy in it. Repent to Allah when they do wrong. They feel regret when they've done wrong. They blame themselves when they've gone astray. And they complain to Allah. 